we know that benzene is not very reactive for two reasons. Number one, conjugated double bonds are stable because of the overlapping p orbitals. And uh, Huckel's rule of 4 and plus 2, this ring contains 6 electrons. So again, for those two reasons, uh, benzene isn't reactive unless we put an activating group on it, like a methyl group. So activating groups activate the benzene ring, making it more reactive. Right. And re really, primarily, the reason why this is going to make the benzene ring more reactive is because, um, the, the, remember, the, these electrons are kind of happening inside here. They're, they're, they're pretty stable. But what's going to happen is if you have something like an alkyl group, and alkyl groups are electron donating groups, alkyl groups are electron donating groups, they're going to push kind of electron density towards the ring. Okay, in other words, it's kind of a, not, not everything is so cut and dry. There's electron density surrounding this whole molecule, but particularly with this carbon, it's going to be a little bit delta minus because of its greater electronegativity than the hydrogen. Uh, but not to get too deep with that, uh, one thing you just need to know is that alkyl groups are electron donating groups. Uh, some, some books might call them electron re releasing. So what that's going to do is that's going to actually push some of these guys out to make this molecule now nucleophilic. This becomes a nucleophile. We know that nucleophiles love um, something that is electron deficient, like the nucleus of an atom which contains protons. That's why we get the nucleophile. Nucleophilic is electron rich. And it's going to now want to react with something that is electron poor. Right? Like a, uh, let's say, a, um, an NO2 plus. So what you'll get is this, uh, this guy's pushing on these electrons on the ring. And now you're going to get these two. I'm just, I'll just pick these two electrons here. that are going to want to react with this NO2 here. So what you'll wind up with is something that looks like this. I'll just draw my CH3 here. And let's just target these two electrons here. Let's, let's just redraw these two other guys since we're not really doing anything with them just yet. Okay. So if these two electrons make up this bond, this electron is going to kind of pivot here, help to form this bond here, since two electrons make up every bond, every single bond, right? Then this guy's going to leave. The, this electron here is going to jump out completely, leaving a positive charge. Oh, I should have drawn that on the outside, actually. Let's see if we can do that. So, yeah, a better way to do it is probably this way. So now have a positive charge on this carbon. It's now reacted with the NO2, and the NO2 is attached to the benzene ring. And, and this is stable. Uh, why? Because, look, you have a positive charge on this carbon here, right next to it, is electron donating group. So it's going to kind of cancel each other out. And so so this, is, this, is, this is pretty stable. Again, because of that activating group. Okay. And I'm just going to redraw this hydrogen over here, which was over here, but we just, they're kind of invisible. We don't draw the, we don't usually draw the hydrogens in on a benzene ring, even though they're there. Now, let's draw a resonance structure for this, because what can happen is whenever you have an allylic positive charge, meaning if you have double bond, single, then a positive charge on this carbon here, these guys are going to be attracted toward the positive. So the electrons are going to move. Negative is going to move toward a positive. That out. And uh, now, let's say I want to make an additional resonance structure. Well, just keep moving these arrows in the same direction. Okay, so now my positive charge was here. Now it's here. And what's the next step? Well, again, this is an allylic um, positive charge to the uh, 
take this double bond here. So I'm just going to move this that way. And what I'm going to wind up with is this. Let's draw my CH3. I'm going to draw my H, my NO2. And this we didn't do anything with. Let's just redraw, let's redraw that. And now, this double bond moved over here. And remember, this electron just kind of pivoted, so nothing's happened to this carbon in terms of charge. But this guy is now deficient, that electron. So the positive charge is going to be, positive charge is going to be here. And so these are my resonance structures when I have a uh, ortho, when I have an ortho attack. If the nitroso group, the NO2, is going to react with this molecule, then of course what you'll get is something like that. So that you have this, right? It's like a meta position. N O2. I'm going to draw my H over here like that. And I'm just going to draw the positive charge right next to where the, uh, where the NO2 group is. So do this here, this here. And again, I'm just going to draw my resonance structures so that if I have this guy moving there, CH3. We draw my NO2, my H. Got this double bond here. We didn't really do anything with that. Of course, this is going to move here. And my positive charge is now over here. And finally, if you have moving in this direction, this double bond can move there. So you have, well, you have something like this, right? Give my CH3. Let me draw my H. Move. Give the NO2 where it is. This bond we didn't do anything with, but now we have this, right? Now, what's the difference between ortho and meta positions? Well, primarily, nowhere do you have this electron donating group directly adjacent to. A positive charge like you do in these resonance structures here right so you have this stable again because you have the ch3 electron donating group directly adjacent to that positive charge so that, that that's really the key in meta you don't have that you don't have positive charge on, on on the carbon that's adjacent to the methyl group in any one of these pictures and these are the three possible resonance structures let's do para which is just directly across from the methyl group. You know, start from scratch again. I mean, they really got a right needer here. Just gonna do the NO2 and. First things first, let's draw the methyl group in. And the NO2 obviously going to be para to the methyl. I'm going to draw my hydrogen over here. And let's make the positive charge. Uh, right next to the NO2 group. And 
first thing that might happen is the nearest or lilac position to to the double bond is going to cause these to move this way so you're left with let's see let me handle two my h usual my methyl group didn't do anything with this double bond now this is here and look what this when we move this double bond look what's left behind here we have of course our positive charge look where the positive charge is right next to the electron donating group making this resonance structure particularly stable so this is stable this is stable and I believe there's one more resonance structure that we can draw CH3 NO2 and let's keep these going in the same direction so if this one was this way this one's going to go up this way right so that I have here here and here those are my three resonance structures for the uh, for the power position now only in the case where you have para and uh, ortho uh, positions toward the activating group do you have these really stable uh, structures that's why this is going to be that's why activating groups are um, ortho para directors right? that's why activating groups are ortho para directors because they're going to direct the attack at uh, at these two positions at this position here and this position here because of these two uh, very stable or I should say more stable uh, resonance structures so what you'll finally get is something like um, uh, when you have uh, NO2 uh, reacting with toluene you might get something like uh, ortho 63% and meta 3% and power 34%. Well, we know the meta, you know, meta, we don't get that stable resonance structure, so this is out, right? So that's why it's so low in terms of the yield for this reaction here. Uh, reacting again the NO2 with toluene. What about, uh, why do you get double ortho and, uh, in other words, 63% ortho and 34% para? Well, because para to the CH3 group, uh, there's only one of those, and one of those positions. Ortho to CH3, there's two, so it's going to be double. 